I kind of knew that going into today that the scores would be not as good just because it was going to be windy and just got to stay controlled out here. I didn't have the best start, but I stuck with it because I know there's a lot of birdies on the back nine. Yeah, it felt good. I felt relaxed. I guess with the high winds, it's kind of hard to set an expectation on the day of what's a good score, what's a bad score. So just kind of go out and take your best guess really on what to throw in each hole and take it for that. It's all you can really do in the high winds. Didn't miss any circle one putts. That was huge today in this wind and just gave myself plenty of opportunities to score. It was just all about adapting and just staying committed and staying smooth. Putt's been feeling good. I don't know if it's just one of those things where I know that like I, I really need to make all those because I, I feel like I'm gonna give myself less opportunities, but you know what I'm doing is working, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. Hello and welcome. It's moving day here in Houston, Texas at the 2024 Texas State Disc Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Disc. Stop four of many here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Big Berry commentary bringing you the action on a very low windy, very good scoring potential day. Yeah, beautiful out, really. Mm -hmm. Beautiful out. We got great cards out here. Scoring conditions can't be any better. It does really? get a little gusty here and there, but that's Texas. What are you going to do about that? Not much. Anthony is going to like that with his 100% in the circle percentage. And he's getting the disc in C2 regularly. I yeah. mean, it's C2 or C1 almost every hole. Calvin, very similar statistics. One shot back of what AB put forth in round one. Calvin's on a bit of a putting streak himself. He hasn't missed a C1 putt since round one of chess.com. So he is coming into this round, putting very well inside circle one. Yes. And we've got a theme going here on lead card. Not one player missing any putts in the circle. Well, Gannon missed one. But besides that, it's really good putting, really good throwing. And that is the recipe for success on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Very young card here, Calvin being the elder statesman, and that's crazy to say because Calvin has just always been like so young compared yes, to right. the old guard, but he is the one with the most experience on this card, but that doesn't say much in this day and age as the average age for the three winners thus far on tour, somewhere in the 21 to 22 year average with wow. Gannon Burr, Anthony Barella, and Niklas Antelo all being younger than 24. Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Discs. First on the box, representing disc craft and grip equipment, please welcome Anthony Barella. Anthony with the hot round at 10 under first round. Yeah, this one's, uh, you got that out-of-bounds left, out-of-bounds right. Miss that tree in the middle. You're going to want to play some sort of a flex shot right here in the calm winds. It's a control shot for AB. Is this one, is is it leaking inside? That's heavy on the high zerk. Oh, he hits the mandatory tree. Wow. <laughs> oh, goodness. Representing Nineveh Champion Discs. He hits the sign. It's a good break. Sure. Who knows what happens if that hits the tree? I mean, that could go out of bounds, miss the mandatory. In the end, I think he's going to like his spot because he's pretty far down the fairway, and I think he can step out and throw a forehand. Yes, and he's only about right at 300 feet. Mm -hmm. This is more what you want right here with Calvin forcing the Anheuser with the overstable driver, getting the big skip. That is a bummer. Yeah, because he's not throwing forehands. Yep. Representing Mint Discs and Lucky Ace Disc Golf. Please welcome Mason Ford. Yeah, I was just going to say, oh, it's fine. He can just step out, but that's right. He's definitely obstructed big time because of that tree. I like how every lead card, it seems like we have a smaller in stature, buttery smooth yeah. biscuit thrower. And that, is, <laughs> that is this guy right here. Dude, Mason he serves Ford. up buttery biscuits all day like it's Bojangles. I mean, Mason Ford is... A chef of the smooth throw. Rounding out our 
card representing Disc Mania and Squatch. Please welcome Cannon Bird. And we always have a couple of giants as well. I mean, this card is. If we swap Mason Ford for myself, we've got the tallest card in disc golf history. Just imagine stacking you guys on top of each other. <laughs> Yuli, no. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> It'd be really tall. Maybe the tallest person ever. <laughs> <laughs> Gannon Burr right down the middle. That's what you're looking for. This is just perfect right here. Yeah, and, and you can really... Oh, look at that. He kind of goes through where the ceiling maybe lets up the most. Yeah, it gives him a little height, doesn't Jeez, it? Jeez, that was such a nice shot. Very well controlled. Probably 320 to 330. And eh, maybe not that far. Yeah, that no, that's correct. Because I was at the drop zone and I was uh, 301. Okay. My drive landed at the drop zone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gannon getting away with the early release throw, trying to put a little bit more Anheuser on it. But edge of the circle, he's going to like that result. Ooh, we got a discussion here. Where do you, it's always a classic. Where do you take the relief with the Mando? How far can you stretch out? Oh, they're wondering if he actually missed it. Cause once you yeah, cross the line, if you cross it at all, even if you come back, you have a miss mandatory, but I don't really see any evidence that could. One of those classic benefit goes to the player. Sure. Which I got, um, destroyed for saying that that is a great rule and that I love it. Really? <laughs> Okay, so no harm, no foul for Anthony. He's got to go lean out forehand. Kind of an awkward stance. Got to go through the outside route. Wow. And gets a decent skip on the grass that usually doesn't skip that much and leaves him 40-plus feet for the birdie. And Calvin's got a useful forehand, but he this is a stance that he can usually manufacture something. This time, just... Hard to keep the nose down through that low ceiling. Yes. I do like his chances when the winds are down, though, from deep. He's got that nice floaty. He can control the whole flight, not worry about a drop or a lift. AB caught 43. He likes starting off with a nice long one, it seems like, these tournaments, doesn't he? That was so smooth. I mean, that is, for angle and height, perfect. And it just came right in there. And it's, it, look how soft it came in. It's still sitting in the chains. Yep. Gannon, not quite as soft, but just as effective. <laughs> I'm playing with Gannon yesterday. He had a couple putts from the 50, 60 range that he like initially puts nose down on it and yet it lifts as it gets closer to the basket. And Simon and I were looking at each other, just like shrugging our shoulders. Like ah, this isn't physically possible. Like physics don't make sense with this putt. You can't put nose down and it lift, but that's just what spin does for a putt. I guess. A little check in with Matty O hole number five, get it wide. Seen a lot of people hit the base. I don't know if he did or not. No. Nope. No, he did not. And it looks like he stayed in bounds, but there is an OB line right where he's standing. That's cash. Two-point bucket for Alabama. Look how low this is, Germ. Oh, my gosh. Did you see that? No. It was. I couldn't quite. It was a black disc, or I missed it. It just hovered. hovered. Yeah, it might have hit grass. Okay, yeah, I I love those. Matty O out there doing something real nice. So 
As we fly over hole two, we want to give a congratulations to the Patreon disc winner from our practice round this week. I'm going to try my best, Helena Berge, or Helena Berge. I think it's Helena Berge. We're going to go with that one. Congratulations, you have won the Lionheart Star Rollo and 3D printed mini. We'll get a hold of you and send that out as soon as possible. Yeah, congratulations. Nice hit. Anthony going 2%. This should be perfect. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to earn it. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's in that 25 to 27 foot range, probably. Another one of these deceiving, slopey greens where it, it, it looks like it's a lot farther away than it actually is because the green is just uphill the entire way. Mason does well there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he's, he's within a yard of that out of bounds, though. Really close. Yeah, there's bunkers on either side of the green here, and this needs to get down because he's heading towards that right bunker, and that sand is a pretty good indication you're out of bounds. Calvin had a little bit of trouble here round one, and this is also... Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, that's good. That, that The bunker on the right side is kind of blind from that view, so it's hard to see, but he was pretty close to it. I was told this was never a golf course. No, actually, I heard yesterday in our comments, somebody said it was a golf yeah, course. It was it an old golf There's course. There's two bunkers right yeah, there and no. the flattest green I've ever seen no, in my it, life. It was, it was a f former golf course. As Gannon saves the par. And then I guess <laughs> the commenter went on to say that there were too many people mugged. And then I guess the golf course shut down. <laughs> so, whoops. Well, uh, hopefully you don't have that happening this weekend. Oh, Good putt there for Mason. We've got the classiest folks out here. we got disc golfers. And not very close. This is all a 25. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely earned it. Decent throwing in the first two holes, but the putting has been everything he's needed. Good start for AB. Good start for Mason. Calvin, a couple pars. Yet that's still two shots better than he did yesterday. Ezra sitting at 10 under. Gets it underneath the low ceiling. Hit the brakes. Oh, there it is. that's a that's, break. That's the... It seems like I've seen so many people hit that <laughs> thing this week. And we got Nathan Queen. Just a little buttery flip up. That is a North Carolina fairway if I've ever seen one. Just get over Ooh. the ridge. Ah, he's going to have to make a, I mean, frightening putt. I mean, that is just nothing but sloping away OB down the bottom of the hill. Cash it. Don't touch my chains. <laughs> He's doing a favor. Making sure they were stiff right there. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matty O on the little gettable par three, hole number seven. It's just like a perfect shape for a backhand turnover with a putter or a slow mid. Keeps it a little short. But he does is, what? He is playing some good golf right now. Yeah, I mean, the, la seasons. the last three seasons, really, man. He, yeah. he is just the ageless wonder at this point. I mean, he's, I feel like he's between your age and my age, and yet he's at the prime of his career. Yes. And it's pretty incredible that he's been able to maintain. Hole three. What a fun par four this one is. Such a long, just basically distance contest off the tee, essentially. You want to perhaps finish a little bit on this left side before you slope down the ridge, but not many people can get down that ridge. From there, it is, if you get close to the ridge, you're looking at about mm, 375 to the pin, probably from the edge of the ridge. Slopey green the entire way, out of bounds left side, out of bounds right side as well. Yeah, play, playing a little farther, probably playing 400. It is a little bit uphill. Yeah, sure. It ranges about 375 yeah. from the edge. But yeah, you're right. I think it is a little bit uphill from that spot. AB doesn't need to turn it over. This is just all hyzer to get to the position that he needs. That's just fine. That'll be fairway in.
Mason getting it flipped up. I like it a lot. Yep, very good. That'll be about 420 in. Playing a bit farther though. Gannon hit this low branch yesterday. This time keeps it really wide just to avoid. I think he realizes you don't need to go full distance if you're a player like Gannon. You know, he can get there just fine by playing the all hyzer T yes. shot. Especially because we're not going to a headwind. When we practiced it on Tuesday, it was just straight rip and headwind, and it didn't matter what you did off the tee, you just couldn't get there in two right. shots. But yeah, similar plays for Gannon, Calvin, and AB. Mason getting a little bit more flex, but he's able to control it nicely. Everyone in the fairway. Seen some people misread this distance a bit, going with their most overstable. Let's see if Calvin can get it dialed in. And they're finding OB left? They're just short, like yeah, this, this yeah. move right here, actually. And, yep. Like it doesn't look as far as it really is. It yeah, seems he, like it's shorter, but it play. like I said, it plays. This plays all of 420, I think. Oh, no. I don't think this is going to end up where Mason was hoping. And it stays safe. Wow. Basically, you see that, that high grass line. That's pretty much the OB line on the bottom of the hill. And then it gets a little bit tighter as you go up. This is very wide. It I think has he, the power. I know Gannon likes to play that high flex play, but I think he yanked onto that one a little bit more than intended. Maybe he's close enough. He's just going to go forehand Venom or Raptor, you think? This is a Venom. And I, I like it. I love the forehand onto the screen, just the way it's slow. Okay, that's... I really love it now. But the way it's sloped, I mean, it, the forehand fade is fading into the hill as opposed to away and down to the bottom. Doesn't want to deal with any rollaways, just lays that one up. I don't uh, think Calvin's yeah, going to do the same, though. He wants Come on! A, he wants a piece. What a putt! Great putt there from Calvin. Let's watch that again from this angle. And just like you called a couple holes ago, man, he's got that dangerous deep C2 putting. I like his putt for uphills, too. You don't have to spin mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. He just kind of pops it up there and lets it float. That's a scary place to run a putt from that range. Gannon, close, but off the mark. We still haven't got to AB's approach. Just a tap in. Three for three. Throw A measured 66 miles per hour and 358 feet. Throw B 69 miles per hour and 456 feet. Similar effort yet 98 feet difference. But why? The answer is proper body mechanics and technique. And this is why the Power Disc Golf Academy has brought on Ezra Aderhold to be your distance coach. Ezra's lessons will help you identify and fix the problems in your swing so that you can add more distance to your throws this week. Stop landing short. Join today at PowerDGA.com. Hole four is a par three, 405 feet. Jim, you did a great job of explaining how tough this one was yesterday. Out of bounds left, out of bounds right. You have some guardian trees as well, but it it's more left than you think. Mm -hmm. It really is, and it's tough to get around this corner. We saw all kinds of people having some fits yesterday. Let's see if our lead card can figure it out. Yeah, this, the stability in this one, I just, I really feel like the, the way to utilize the most the biggest part of the fairway is like the flip up a fairway driver. That's what AB's doing. Yeah. No flip up, but he doesn't. Yeah. He has yeah. the power to be able to push something. Right. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, that's inside twenty five feet. That's exactly what you're looking for. But it really hit the biggest part of the fairway. It really was never in any danger. The problem is if you try to keep it too wide and trying to play the big wide hyzer. I love this going. Mm -hmm. Go in the hole. 
Mm, wow, I'm always I'm always surprised on this one. I like that though. I yeah, mean, it's a great shot. Again, he's use, utilizing the biggest part of the fairway and not pushing those back edge trees. Just deceived. Get in front of him. He does. This is going to be great. Oh yeah, bullseye hit for Mason. Man, he's getting. He has been so good this season. Mason has really been on all the leaderboards. Yeah, I think at all four tournaments so far, he's been right up there. Really finding his own. As good as that was, and it was parked on that follow flight line, you really got to see how close the width of his disc was to those trees. This is dangerously and, close to those. Oh, oh my gosh, wow. that just narrowly squeaked through. Are we, if we see a follow flight here, no, okay. I mean, it definitely gets lost in the limbs. Nice, Calvin. Keeping that 100% yeah. going. If he makes all his putts, I mean, geez, Louise. He's he's a scary individual. Without him, he's terrifying. With him. <laughs> yeah, he's already, he's just in general. Just give so. up. Yeah. Just quit kind running. Kind of a scary man. That looked very confident. A, B, four for four. Beautiful putt there. If you're throwing well at this course, I mean, putting well is always going to save you. But if, if you're throwing well in this course, especially when it's light wind, I mean, you just, are, you're going to do well. And I mean, that seems to translate to a lot of courses, but there's a lot of places where if you throw one good shot, it's not good enough. You still need yeah. to throw a second or third good shot. This course you can dissect yes. with one good shots a lot of times. Checking with Simon here. He's going to go. This is all the way to the par five, eight. Monstrous. Oh, Anheuser. man. That's the Simon we love. Jeez Louise. Is he putting? That's a putt. Dude is putting for Eagle. No, 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 no. No way. Oh, whoo. that is crazy though, Paul. He's in C2. Okay, that would have been a really <laughs> sad story and have been messed up on Joma's editors leaving it in there if he three butted. I kind of want him to, like, <laughs> so it's not always like guaranteed bird. Oh, uh, throw a little miss what a in there. six second shot for Simon going full six hundred feet, maybe. Wow, and a great start for our card. Everyone at least two under. Mason three, A B, unblemished thus far going into. The par three fifth, 351 feet. We've shown you a couple of check-ins already. This one is difficult because it is, you can see the band, but you can't see the base. And it starts to slope away once you get over this ridge. And it gets kind of fast, even though that grass has a lot of the weeds in there, which is kind of thick, it can grab your disc. It can also stand up and roll and you can find yourself at the bottom of the hill like we saw with Matty O. This looks really good, Paul. As long as it can slow down, I agree. It just goes. That's a sound. Still a scary putt. Yeah, I mean he. Thirty footer. It's like at what point do you want to get that skip, and at what point do you want it to not skip? Right. It's so so tricky. It's... Similar line. Yeah. A little more overstable. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Nice shot for Calvin. Oh, a little too. He is going forehand. I he looked like he was lining it up, and he's actually executing. I love the line, obviously. Sure, just crept into C one. You really take the ceiling out of play. You're guaranteed to get up the fairway pretty much. And look at that, Gannon likes it as well. Going to follow suit. A little more juice on it. Although he did do this in round oh, one. That's so good. That's great touch. A B up first, scary putt. I mean, just velvety.
It looks so calm. Very poised. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Mason, I mean, just hanging there, hanging right in there with four under start through five. It's good stuff. Only two back of the lead. Yeah, everybody playing fantastic in these holes. Although you feel bad in these conditions missing any of them, it's still great birdies all yeah, the way around. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is if this is just if this is an elite series tournament, if somebody starts off two through five, they're feeling pretty good. But yeah. elite series with the wind down, that's really the biggest obstacle in this course. It's pretty wide open. The wind comes through, it's gonna keep you really honest. But I mean, if when the wind's down, these guys are just too talented to not birdie it. I mean, a lot. all of them. I mean, Anthony's got every single one so far. Hole six, par four, 665 feet. Up the hill, around the corner, dog leg right. Out of bounds left, it comes in very tight on the left hand side. As soon as you crest the hill, you gotta put on the brakes because that out of bounds will come into play. They did uh, do a little tree yeah. trimming on mm -hmm. this hole. To, they said that the wind was blowing some branches a little too far down for their liking. So they trimmed it up a little bit, which I like. Gives you a little more room to uh, throw your shot through this gap. Anthony going with the sidearm. It's it's an awkward sidearm. It is. It, it, the early tree on the right side, the stagger gap makes it uncomfortable. This is inside. It's fine. He's like way safe, but the angle and it's going to be a tough shot to get there on the next one. Turn. Oh boy, this is really good, Germ. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good stuff. Because of the way that the two trees are that really create the gap, I like Calvin's drive on this hole more than maybe anyone's. Oh no. Oh, what a redirection. <laughs> it still lands flat and soft and buttery. Just doesn't matter what it hits. Yeah, he pulls it pretty good there. It gets away with it. There is, it, you see a lot of people hit those limbs and they go straight out of bounds left. The tricky thing with the forehand here is you, you want to get it straight as far as you can. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to bring in those two trees that create that narrow pinch gap into play. And it's a lot of things happening. I like this play. He's laying this up. Just put it, you know, 100 feet somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah he, I mean, he, he took birdie out of the equation by hitting the gap. That being said, I mean, he's deep C2, maybe early C3. Yep. I don't see him going for the basket. It's elevated. It's a little low. Does it have enough? And he just sit down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, little thirty footer again. Yeah, inside the circle. Good shot for A B. Chance to make it six for six. Again. I like this. Gets it wide. That's the Yeah, key. that's the key here. Absolutely. Oh, that is and it's so gonna roll good. back to it, isn't it? Yeah, bullseye. Awesome. The width is key. You see that there's trees on the left side that you think you might hit, but if you get the distance right, you'll never hit those trees. This has got to go. A ah, little too much on the burn and turn for Calvin. He's running this, right? Yeah, he's, he's, oh, no. Okay. He's pretty gutsy with those long range ones, yeah, but is. it is instant trouble behind the basket. It's really difficult to lay, to, to go for that putt. Hard to justify the instant bogey that it turns into if you airball it. Yeah. Anthony, a little closer than 30 feet, actually. Ah, and the perfect round ends here on hole six. Low off the cage, and look at that. Gannon just gets to tap it, tap it in. And... 
Ganon will be the only birdie on the card. Hole six, it was the hardest hole in round one, and it was the same in round two, still averaging 4.2. So this hole has been giving the field fits to the first two rounds. Cheers to helping new players, to high fives and encouragement, to being a positive light while helping grow the sport. Cheers to you, Ranger team. Thank you. Well, here is a gimme feeling hole. Hole seven, short, pretty wide open fairway, only 294 feet. It's gonna be a backhand turnover putter for all four of these guys. Ceiling's fairly generous as well for this shot. Beauty. Oh, jeez. I, I mean, it's just a gimme for Gannon. I don't want to call star frame yet, but I mean, that's just how this whole plays. I just, I, I would be surprised to not see all four of these guys just nail the line. Perfect. Well, you got to get lucky through these branches. With all the putter plays, they all have gotten through, but that's the only killer. You hit those, you come pop a little left, circle's edge. You can also hit that guardian tree on the left coming in. If it's a little too mm -hmm. wide, sure. But this is the preferred shot for all four of these guys. Like, this is the shot that they are best at. He nicks a little branch, see what I mean? No, yeah, come on, bullseye. Not, not clean. Nearly bullseye. Well, when you got this guy... As your anchor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. This guy. Yep. Yep. That's a... Ooh, uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. oh. Actually, okay. He's got to make a 30-footer. He has been putting super well. Sometimes there's a little extra nerves on the player when everyone's so close. <sighs> and I was wrong. It shall not but be a no star limbs. frame. But no what? Limbs. No limbs. No limbs. Pure shots. You'll take that where he was. Gotta make those putts. Yeah, just has to commit to a little bit more spin. He just tried to be a little too smooth with that one and end up fighting out. That's out of turn, Gannon. That's your first warning. But at least he grabs it for him. Yeah. So it was like a favor. What do you say? Do you still warn him? No, you just say thank you. You say don't do it again? No. <laughs> Moving on. Matty O on hole 10. This is a great par four. Just got to keep it low and also avoid a big skip left. That branch saved him. Potentially saves him. Yeah, I mean, if that gets nothing but ground play, it could run OB left. <laughs> what is that? I love it. <laughs> that is... A quintessential fake, that is a fake follow-through my friend that is not real he did not <laughs> that is that the cha-cha dude that is the first time i think that this is rigged <laughs> <laughs> it's all the simulation <laughs> oh <gosh>. out there <laughs> <That's amazing>. <laughs> <laughs> oh anthony uh, bro back on track he is now six under the through seven thing i've seen in a long time <laughs> He is just a wild, like every mannerism that Matty O possesses is He's just like, wait, oh, unique. I forgot to follow through. <laughs> <laughs> Hole eight. Oh, yeah, I'm good. 1161. Big tee shot. Second shot, you got to contend with these trees in some way. Heiser, Anheuser. We did see uh, one guy go straight through yesterday. From there, it is, uh, I mean, heck, if you do what Simon did, you got a putt for Eagle. But I don't know. I mean, Anthony has enough power to get there in two. Does he try to? We'll see. All these guys do, except for maybe Mason. He could get it with a roller. This isn't a this is an eagle play by any stretch, though. This is gonna be left and just fine. Yeah, maybe a tiny little pesky tree in the way, but I don't think that's gonna bother Ganon too you much. Get. Turn it over. Turn it over, Ganon. Oh, he's got the green one. He's got the turn on it. Ah, he overturned it. 
It's going to be safe. Oh, wow. Oh, barely, barely, barely. Wow. Yeah, it looked like he was going for the big business. Mm -hmm. This is not a big business shot. That is his most stable. That's just Calvin doing his business. That is just, well, that's All not a drama, but business. yeah, that's, that's what Calvin does. Oh no. What? What? Well, 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 what do we have here? That is surprising. I mean, that thing looked fine out of the hand. Caught, is, the, caught the worst skip. Yeah, it caught the one place where it really can skip and then it got full action on it. Surprising result there, result for Calvin there. It, it was a misrelease, let's be honest. Yeah, it must have been. I mean, it was early. I'm sure he's not even trying to get anywhere close to that line. Now he's just going hyzer. This is going to leave him a, a bit longer in into the green, but it's in a good spot. He'll be able to play wide hyzer. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Oh, yeah, pesky tree. Very pesky. Turn it over, Gannon. Got to go forehand hyzer, and once you get on the backside of those trees, he's going to have probably in the range of 360 yep. into the pin, something like that, maybe closer. This is going going places. The oh. commitment over the OB. I, I hope and this he, has enough turn. He needs tree love. And that's... Uh, I'm confused. I see a stake, and it is out of bounds. So now, what happens? Where did, where did he cross? Okay, so AB up next, just barely hanging on in bounds. The stutter steps a little to avoid the pesky OB stake. And he's going to have 100 feet in. Yeah, that was good. Keep turning, camera guy. Let's get a good view. Okay. 150. 150. That's one thing I've been impressed with AB this year is he... I watched a lot of coverage of this last year. Mm. And he, he took second at the event. Calvin just ran away with it, right? Right. But he was going after these holes, crazy aggressive rollers, yep. trying to get there. And now he has this down tempo stroke and he's just golfing. A lot like we saw when Eagle really made the transition sure. to that superstardom winner. And Simon as well. I mean, Simon was. Absolutely. He has a shot named after him. Yes. Whatever yep. the craziest shot you can imagine is called the Simon. Yeah, the Simon line. But. As he's toning it down, I I still think Calvin needed that one. That Eagle is close, but Anthony has the ability to go so far. I think we've all known that for a long time. No, I mean just in distance in general. Like his oh. arm speed and the oh, capabilities that he has. Yeah. I mean it's, it's hard to tone that down and be like, all right, I'm gonna just Eagle just has an all time it. highlight of the bullseye seven hundred sixty mm -hmm. foot par Absolutely, four. Yeah. Like when we get A B to have a highlight reel like that, then Oh, you know. I think you I think we all know that A B is the farthest fastest. Yes, yeah, sure, no question. Mason but, comes up a little short with his bid. Gannon's forehand a little wide left with this one and pulls it right. Or a bogey and yeah this is uh, this is a tough bogey to take uh, this is a hole where birdie just feels like the score you have to take especially on a calm day two ob's managed to save the bogey though yeah it just comes out of nowhere really this is not one you're thinking about no bogeying ever no and we are finally getting up to AB's approach after that blistered, honestly, first and second shot were blistered. That second shot was really nice with the awkward run up. Now to hole 10 with Ezra. Low ceiling. Yeah, just throw it in those branches and it's fine. See? <laughs> That'll leave 
In the 370 range. Really? Yes. Ooh. As with the forehand power. Ooh. Just outside C1. That's where he likes it. Be a little step putt for Ez. Thank you very much. Never skip leg day, folks. I never skip Taco Tuesday. That's, <laughs> that's what I would say to the people. Matty O never skips Crawfish Wednesdays. Nope. And he also doesn't skip birdies, man. He is on a streak right now. Six of the last seven. And we'll get a little Simon Lozat siding. Hole 12, a little 460. Up yeah. the right side, hopefully. Turn it over a bit. He does that. Miss that tree. Right side. Miss that tree. Miss so, that tree. Just getting the base of it, but that still leaves him right outside the circle. Time for him to do his little standstill, nose up, spinny guy that he likes to do. Uh, cash. Farther than I thought. I thought it like snuck around. It hit that wide base of the yeah. tree hard, man. It just really absorbed all the energy. He jump putted that. I didn't see that. Anthony did. Yeah. Calvin, the first bogey of our lead card on moving day. One hole away from halfway through the event, and it's hole nine, 360 feet. Another low ceiling if you go the right side. You got a little bit more room to work with if you go the left side with the forehand. Uh, OB left and right and long as well. You can see putters, mids. Rollers. No, Doubt probably. full on yeah, that no, one. You good. AB's got the Luna in his hand. He likes this left to right bleeder. Get it over towards that pine. Starting line, and oh goodness, this is good, Germ. Wow. Yeah, and just creeping into the circle. Call it 27 feet. It's a highly technical shot right there. It is a very well executed shot, and he's Eight. been knocking those putts down so far this round. Oh, he pulls it. Does he get through? He does. Yeah. He gets away with it. I was interested to see if he was going to go forehand because when he saw me throw mine yesterday, he's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And I thought that he, we might see a gameplay switch for Gannon in here, but sticking to the backhand. This is a tough line because of how low ceiling it is, but it looks like Mason just absolutely throws it as good as you can throw it. It's a Kept very, it low. Very Mason type shot right there. Yes. Just a little flip up with the fairway driver, keeping it low, driven through the gap. Money. Mid range here from Calvin. And that's the high. Calvin doesn't really do anything buttery. There's nothing buttery about Calvin's form or delivery or putt or anything. It's Flight. just Oh yeah. If you take away the the like violent action yes. of the throwing process, the, everything else is beautiful at that point. Again, a little off today with the stroke. We're used to seeing him make Yeah. He's definitely missed three that yep. you can normally yeah. count on more chains than that. Oh, AB's well in the circle. Yeah, I think this is closer to 25. Over the rim. On the stripe. Not, yeah. a, lot, not a lot of stripes left Just on these baskets shot lately. Eight under on the front nine. Whoa. Really? He missed six, hole six. That's yeah, well, that's it? the hardest hole in the course. And he just missed a putt. Inside the circle. He's been inside C2 every hole so far, and most of them have been inside C1. He just had to make that one long one wow, in hole one. That was boring. Kind of boring, but also not so boring. Pretty awesome. Oh, absolutely. You know, it just went under my radar, though. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you look as good as he's looking right now. You're making it look easy. Very easy. Good golf is always a little boring. <laughs> oh my. What in the fake follow through is this? <laughs> He's doing it again, Paul. I think that was a little better. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> like the other one, he stopped and then he was like, oh yeah. It goes past oh, the basket. Oh, there's my hop, baby. Froggy hop, Give point. it. Give it to him. <laughs> Ribbit. 
<laughs> well, that was a fun front nine. Wasn't man. it? Yeah, we got one bogey from Calvin, and the rest was just mostly birdies and some pars, but that's to be expected yep. on a calm day here at Brock Park. This course is very scorable, and it's being proven right now. Absolutely. Well, I mean, AB looks pretty poised. Gannon's going to have to clean up the putting. Calvin looks a little shaky. Mason, smooth as always. Uh, back nine's where you can score. I mean, one of these guys can get really hot. Yeah, that, that cash line that we were prophesizing about somewhere in the double digits is going to it's going to need to be probably closer to like 13, 14, just seeing the way that things are going. Not that that's what you guys are worried about, but uh, it's, it's a nice storyline, though. It's sure. a nice storyline always. But anyways, we've got nine more holes to go here for moving day here in Houston. But we also are midway through the event right now. Anthony Barella is holding on to a good lead. See you in a bit.